Below Average Gaming. I'm your host, The Below Average Gamer. Today we're going to be talking about something really interesting, something really close to my heart. So thank you for joining me on this Below Average update today. Today I want to talk about, and we're going to discuss, the one link that can tie the entire MCU together. Um, that includes the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, the Avengers, even Deadpool. And we're going to go ahead and see how that can work. And there are um, even characters like the Defenders, like Daredevil, Punisher, all those other characters. And hopefully those will end up being tied in as well, and I think the best way to go about this, the best way to get this kind of situated, is to just go ahead and let me get rid of that. Um, just explain how this plot would happen in this Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've been thinking a lot about this and what the best way to get all these characters into this one storyline would be. And I think it all comes down to one character, just one villain who may not even understand that he's a villain, but just one thing that could actually bring everything together one cataclysmic event bigger than apocalypse and x-men bigger than loki bigger than sokovia or zemo or any of that stuff and for the x-men even bigger than doom or for, sorry for the fantastic four even bigger than doom himself so this is that one thing that i think could link up all those characters including deadpool so let's just go ahead and hop into it okay so first off i want to start out by talking about the plot kind of how this would all happen in my brain how this would work getting this character in getting these characters all to kind of interact and work together um i think is going to start out with the x-men so we're going to go all the way back to 1970 and we're going to start out with mcavoy as the young professor x working with a student so i think the scene's going to open up and it's going to have mcavoy talking to this student almost like a therapy session talking you know discussing tell me where you came from tell me old stuff blah, 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 blah. Kid gets up, kid leaves, and that's pretty much the end of that. Maybe Jean Grey will come, come in. in. Um, the Jean Grey, the new one from the uh, Apocalypse series. He's going to come in and say, oh yeah, I remember these sessions we used to have them with me, although they weren't quite as intensive. Now what's this going to set up? This is going to set up the idea that this mutant that we're talking about is stronger than Jean Grey, stronger than the Phoenix uh, by a lot. So not only is he having these same types of meetings that he's been having with Jean, Jean Grey, but he's also having them more frequently. They're more intense. They're stronger. They're lasting longer. All these things. And it's going to lead up to this character being just a little bit stronger. Now, how are we going to make this character kind of show off just how strong he is, even as a kid? Um, well, what if he goes out? What if he's hanging out on the courtyard or something? And these bullies are just teasing him. These bullies are pushing him. These bullies are doing all sorts of stuff. And he's just hanging out. He's like, yeah, you know, knock it off. Leave me alone. And uh, they're, just, they're, they're not giving up. Um, so he unleashes his power on them, which for him would be a cataclysmic blast, a telekinetic blast, which in the comics, um, what happens is he does that as a kid, wipes out his family. But I think if he starts out at the, um, Xavier Institute, I think that would be the same type of deal. Wipes out those kids, looks around like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Think of it the same thing as like in X-Men, uh, 3. The Last Stand, I don't want to bring it up, but I think this is one of those examples where that's going to work. Um, imagine The Last Stand where the kid turns around, he has the wings, and he's cut off the wings. Um, and Angel kind of looks at his dad, and it's just, I'm sorry type of scene. Um, if he just kind of looks back and sees McAvoy as uh, Charles Xavier there, they kind of have that connection, and then it's like an I'm sorry type thing. Smash cut to current day. Same kid, like, maybe even repeat that phrase, like, I am sorry. He's holding on to the hand of his wife who is dying in, on, on the, uh, on the, uh, in the hospital bed. Maybe she's been in a coma or something. Because in the comics, what happens is during a scroll invasion, his wife is actually kind of in the crossfire. And she gets murdered. So I think that this would kind of replay on that. If maybe the events of Avengers 1, where the alien invasion kind of happened. If we have that, then that's kind of what puts her in a coma. And eventually she just kind of passes away would be the same type of thing. He kind of blames the aliens, he blames the Avengers, he blames all these supers for every issue that he's ever had in his life. I think that would be a big deal for him, something really big in his life. And um, even then we could smash cut from that to just the Avengers kind of maybe discussing, maybe they're in a fight or an argument, the new Avengers and the old Avengers, that where they ended up as of Civil War, kind of fighting and trying to decide like who's right and who's wrong. And um, they get that, that on the radio, the whole thing on the radio of just, you know, there's been an incident, something has happened at in New York City at the hospital, you have to come quick, um, hundreds dead, blah, 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 whatever, okay? So, they go into New York, Captain America, Iron Man, the whole team is all there back together to kind of work and deal with this. And they find this character. I think this would be a great scene. 
if Iron Man is going through the rubble and finds this guy, and he's like, what happened here? And the guy's like, I don't know, I don't know what happened, da 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 And Robert Downey Jr. does that Robert Downey Jr. thing where he starts being a little too chatty. And he just causes um, this character uh, to just explode, knock him out, explode him completely, destroy the suit, destroy everything within the suit. Iron Man is virtually dead. But he's not dead. It's one of those things that they pulled in Iron Man 3 a lot. Again, I'm drawing on some really not that great material. But Iron Man 3, where does that thing where it's like, oh no, Iron Man's dead. Oh, just kidding. He was piloting the drone suit from afar. So that whole thing. And they're like, man, he just completely destroyed Iron Man. Or he made an attempt to completely destroy Iron Man. Kind of that same feel we had when Bucky was perfectly willing to shoot the gun at uh, Tony Stark's face in Civil War. That whole like, whoa, this is for real type thing. He just tried to kill Iron Man. It would even evoke that emotion of, like, this is going to change everything. And it's like, oh, just kill a drone. But still, this character's huge. He's going to be a big thing in this story. This big thing. One of the big things in Marvel, comics, cinematic universe, all that whole thing, is that Scarlet Witch is there. And she is originally in the X-Men universe. So I think if we can link those two things together, they're kind of trying to decide, you know, who is this guy? What do we do about him? And she kind of brings up this idea of, like, you know, Maybe when they were running the experiments on her and her brother, or whatever that happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. She heard of, or had something to do with this school for people who had mutated or extra human abilities. So she says, we should go talk to Charles Xavier. And everyone's like, I don't know who that is, whatever, okay, whatever, da, da, da. Maybe some of them actually do know, maybe Robert Downey Jr. has been keeping tabs on this mutant school just in case something were to go down. Um, maybe it's hidden because um, the government wouldn't want something like that. We've seen in Civil War that a school or a team outside of the government of super-powered individuals is not something that the government wants. So maybe, I don't know, something's going on there and they track him down. And maybe Professor X meets them halfway because he's psychic. And he's like, ah, I knew you were coming. And this would have to be the Patrick Stewart uh, Professor X because it would be a couple years later, so he'd be a little bit older. And he's going to reveal that this character, this kid, is, and here's the name for him, Matthew Malloy. Now, and Matthew Malloy is known as what's, what's known as a, an above Omega level mutant in the X-Men universe. Meaning that he is exponentially powerful. He's dangerous on that same level as Apocalypse, if not higher. So he's a dangerous guy, a scary guy, a bad guy. Uh, even if he doesn't know it, he's a danger to himself and others. So there's that whole thing. And he kind of explains um, how when Matthew was a kid, he put up these barriers to try to block Matthew from um, being able to use the full extent of his powers, kind of like he did with Jean Grey. There's that whole connection there. At this point, Jean Grey would be gone. You know, we're kind of past all that stuff. We're in the later X-Men universe. But um, yeah, so that whole thing's happening. And they're like, oh, well, how come he just learned about his powers now? He seemed like he didn't know that he even had them. Well, yeah, that's the thing, is once Charles Xavier figured out, like, I'm not going to be able to control this kid, no matter how many barriers I put up, it's not going to be enough. He probably basically told the kid, like, okay, you don't have powers. You don't believe that you're a mutant anymore. You don't know how to use them. You don't understand powers. You are you don't know what mutants are. You don't have powers. And the kid was like, okay, I understand, because he's brainwashed. He's been brainwiped, like, he doesn't understand his powers. So now he's existing in the city with these powers that he doesn't know, that he doesn't understand, he just suddenly became a monster. And in the comics and everything, it's that same like cataclysmic event of like something big happening in his life that triggered that. And I think the death of his wife would be that big thing that triggers him to, you know, go insane, to lose control of his powers and get everyone involved. So now we've connected the X-Men to the Avengers. I'm getting kind of blah, 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 as you can tell. Um, we connect the X-Men to the Avengers. Then you're probably thinking, you know, where's Deadpool? Where's, uh, the Defenders? Where's all these characters that we were promised? Where's the Fantastic Four, you know? I mean, them linking Spider-Man with Sony into the Marvel Cinematic Universe was a huge thing. So obviously linking these characters has to be a big thing as well. So we've already got, uh, Charles Xavier linked into the Cinematic Universe due to this whole thing. Um, maybe they're talking about, you know, ways that they could stop him, ways that they could get rid of him. And they said, well, if only we had someone who could, like, heal just as fast as they're destroyed. And Charles Xavier's like, oh, you know, I used to have a mutant like that, but he's actually looking for someone who's abusing his blood to make other mutants, which is a shout-out to Wolverine and Deadpool. I think having Deadpool actually in the movie would kind of take away from some of the seriousness of what's going on here. 
he would have the tendency to take over the entire movie, I think, would be his personality type. Like, him being in the movie at all, being a character, being a side character, anything, would you'd, you'd either have to drastically remove a lot of the stuff that makes Deadpool Deadpool, or he would just have to be the star of the movie. So, I think just having him as a shout-out to why Wolverine isn't there would be huge. Um, like I said, uh, like, yeah, it would be a reason that Wolverine's not there, it'd be a reason... To us to include the fact that Deadpool exists in this universe, maybe for future movies. But I think the best thing to do with him is to just leave him as a shout-out, rather than to keep him as a character in the movie. So maybe he'll be an after credit scene or something. Who knows? I think that'd be great to just have him as a post credit scene, kind of like they did with Howard the Duck in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and again, the reason I'm not including Guardians of the Galaxy in this list is because after due to Infinity War coming up, they're already going to be coming into the cinematic universe. So I don't want to draw them in just for them to be drawn in again. These are characters like the X-Men, Fantastic Four, characters like that, that are most likely never going to cross paths. But for this storyline, they could have the possibility, and comic-wise, it's happened before. So a lot of the storyline here it does have to do with the comics, but let's go ahead and just hop right back into that. So they're kind of trying to figure this out. Charles Xavier may be saying, like, you know, I never fully understood where his power comes from, where he's able to draw this energy. Now, Stephen Strange is a part of the Avengers now, and he's saying, like, oh, you know, I've been trying to analyze this, I've been trying to figure this out. Mustache Bros, uh, Tony Stark, and Stephen Strange have been working and have come up with this idea that perhaps he's drawing this magic energy, as Stephen Strange might put it, from a different dimension. This, there's, he's, he himself, Matthew Malloy, is a rift in a different dimension who's able to extract that power and use it at his own will. So being able to use that power of his own will of a different dimension, they're like, you know, different dimensions, stuff like that. It's not quite something that we fully understand. Yeah, Thor kind of had stuff like that, but it's not completely on their realm of believing. So they might have to get some extra help. So they would might have to go to someone who has some experience with alternate dimension stuff. In this case, that would be Reed Richards, who, um, in case you haven't seen the last, if you haven't seen the last Fantastic Four movie, good on you, you did not waste any money, because it was not great. So this would have to be a hard reboot of that, um, possibly get Reed Richards prior to the events of the Fantastic Four. So he's maybe just experimenting, still just a young scientist working at the Baxter building, just a young scientist working on this idea of interdimensional transportation, or teleportation, or whatever. And they say, yeah, you know, you kind of know what's going on here. We would love to get your input on this read. And he's like, okay, yeah, I'd love to help. So he's telling them, you know, oh yeah, it looks like it's interdimensional stuff. He's getting this energy from another place and pushing it through to him. He, and he'll pretty much explain, like, he is existing as the rift between dimensions. Able to open and close that rift as he pleases and blast energy beams through whenever he feels. So I think that would be a good tie-in for Reed Richards. Now you're probably thinking, like, at this time, what's Matthew Malloy doing? He's wreaking havoc on the city or what? Well, the Defenders would probably be the best case scenario to take care of him. Because they have on their team both Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Who, Luke Cage with his bulletproof skin and Jessica Jones with just her superhuman abilities would be great to go headlong into what Matthew Malloy can do. I mean, they're not going to be very much affected or it'd be interesting to see how they're affected by his abilities. And with Iron Fist on their team as well, coming out soon on Netflix, um, his ability to channel his own energy into physical um, physical form and being able to just channel that same type of energy, I think if we could link that and he's maybe able to take portions of whatever Matthew Mallory is dealing out and wield them himself, I think that would be interesting to see kind of how that works. Um, we also have the Punisher and Daredevil, who at this point in the series, they're kind of button heads, I think this could be a good opportunity for them to say, you know, we're going to put aside our differences to help out the city of New York type thing, you know? They're having their own civil war within themselves, so I think that'd be interesting. Now, I don't know the ending yet. I'm assuming Thor or Hulk are going to be something big there, because I would just love to see the fight scene between little skinny Matthew Malloy causing this force field of destruction versus uh, Hulk, who's just, heal again, healing as fast as he's being destroyed. Like, he would be the endgame thing of, like, oh, right, you have the Wolverine and Deadpool, we have a Hulk type thing. And it's like, oh, right, you have something just as good. So they would have the Hulk kind of maybe go against him. In the comics, what happens is um, Maria Hill actually has S.H.I.E.L.D. agents just pummel and destroy this dude with, with bullets and missiles, trying to kill him before he has a chance to 
block himself. Um, Matthew Malloy also ends up killing a couple of telepaths who are trying to get into his brain. So getting into his brain, an internal attack also is not going to work. So they just say, you know, we're just going to shoot a bunch of bullets. And it ends up killing everyone involved in the battle. So it kills not only Matthew Malloy, but everyone near him. Which would be interesting to see, because there'd be a lot of casualty, both human side, meta-human side, um, as well as possibly some Avengers. Um, just to see kind of how that would work. Maybe they're injured, maybe they're killed. Who knows? Um, I think it'd be really interesting to see how they would handle that type of thing. You know, characters' deaths have always been something that it seems like the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been almost avoiding recently. Yeah, we had Quicksilver die, uh, even though they didn't mention his name, since they, Quicksilver belongs to the X-Men title. But they had him die, so that was kind of like, yeah, but I feel like they're kind of trying to stray away from main characters dying. And I think that this would be kind of a good excuse to do that. Maybe even Deadpool comes in and he does that whole, like, I'm going to go back in time. Thanks, Cable. And then they save these characters. Um, in this universe, too, in the, the storyline of Matthew Malloy, Cyclops ends up having a huge part as well in that comic book story. I think it'd be interesting to see that. Um, because another character who does die early in that storyline is Charles Xavier. He's actually killed by Cyclops. Check out and look into it if you want. It's a really cool storyline that deals with like Charles Xavier's beliefs and what he stands for and how he kind of starts to go against his own beliefs in the eyes of Cyclops. Or the eye of Cyclops. So, yeah, it's a really interesting story. But here we go. We have everything set up. We have the X-Men and Fantastic Four, at least Reed Richards so far, working with the Avengers to try to understand who this is and how to stop him. Meanwhile, the Defenders are trying to keep him at bay, keep him corralled into one section of the city, or even trying to draw him out of the city. We have Thor and Hulk, who might end up coming back to take on that fight. But yeah, I think it could be really interesting. I think it would be fantastic. And honestly, I think that Matthew Malloy would be the one character who is not only strong enough that he could put up a decent fight against all of the characters, but also, like, I don't know, naive enough that he's not really a villain. Kind of like how you feel about Zemo towards the end of the movie, Civil War, where it's like, yeah, you know, he's a bad guy, but I kind of get it. He's kind of just upset that his family died. He's upset about what happened to his country, about what happened to his people, and he realized, like, I have to do something about this. The government's not doing anything. I have to do something. So I, I think that this character of Matthew Malloy would be a really good foil to that idea of good versus evil if he was just that middle ground of like, I'm evil, but I, I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me. I'm just a monster that woke up like this. So yeah, I think that'd be a fantastic way to draw in all the characters of the Marvel Cinematic Universe along with Fantastic Four, along with X-Men. We already have Spider-Man in there. Uh, Daredevil, uh, shout out to Deadpool just to prove that he exists in that same world. Uh, even the Defenders from Netflix would be on there. I'm sure Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would have Maria Hill, who is a huge part of that Matthew Malloy storyline, all tied in. And yeah, that's pretty much my theory for how that story would look, or uh, my theory on how that movie would play out. But let me know what you think. Type in the comics. Um, is there anything else that I forgot? Is there any characters who are in movies currently that you think should have some way woven in there? Is there anything that you think, um, no, 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 that doesn't work, he actually got that superhero's power all wrong? Or, hey, what about this character? All sorts of stuff. If you have anything, just please comments below. Like and subscribe as well. I have other videos. Um, this is my second debut of this setup or this type of deal. So let me know what you think again. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, um, you the best, and thank you for watching Below Average Gaming. Bye.